When looking at inverse functions, the first thing we need to know and remind ourselves of is what a function is. Now, earlier on, we looked at functions, and we know a function is a rule that assigns to each element of the domain a unique element of the range. Now, before we can look at inverse functions, we have to define what we mean by a one-to-one -one function. So a function is one-to-one -one if no two elements of the domain are mapped onto the same element of the range. So if we, for example, say this domain has only three elements, one, two, and three, one gets mapped onto five, two gets mapped onto seven, and three gets mapped onto nine. So this is a function because each element of the domain goes to a unique element of the range, and it's one-to-one -one because no two elements of the domain goes to the same element of the range. Whereas if I had one, two, three, and one gets mapped onto five, but two also gets mapped onto five, and let's say three gets mapped onto seven, if we look at this relation, it's still a function because each element of the domain is mapped onto only one element of the range. So it is a function, but it's not one to one because I've got two elements of the domain that gets mapped onto the same element of the range. So if we look at x1 and x2, are they both in my domain? And if they're different, it's not the same element. If I've got two different elements from my domain, then their images cannot be equal. So they cannot be ma mapped onto the same element of the range. All right, so we want a function to be one-to-one -one before we look at the inverse of the function. That's the first thing. So let's just look at graphically how we see that. In the graph of a function, to see if a function is one-to-one, -one, what we need to look at is the definition that says each element of the domain we know as a function because it's mapped onto one element of the range. But what you're looking at is elements of the range, y values. Is there a y value that has two x values mapped onto it? If there's a y value that has more than one x value mapped onto it, then it's not one-to-one. -one. This first case is one-to-one. -one. But in the second case, we can easily see there's a couple of y values that has two x values mapped onto it. We can also use what is called the horizontal line test, that if you draw a line horizontally parallel to the x-axis anywhere on my graph, if it cuts the graph more than once anywhere, then the function is not one-to-one. -one. But just have a warning, this is a test, it's not a proof, and it's only on the condition that my input numbers are on the horizontal axis. All right, there's one more concept we need, but let's just, in symbols then, a function, if for every x in my domain, there exists a unique element in B, because F is mapping A to B. A one-to-one -one function we've seen, if I've got two x values from my domain, and they're not equal, then their images aren't equal. Now, there's one more thing we need, and that's the concept of an onto function. If F goes from A to B, generally we look at A as the domain, but we just know it maps into B. We don't often look at what the elements of B are, and B is not always the range. But if B is the whole range, then my function is onto. So meaning if I pick any value in B, there will be something in A that goes to that value in B, that's mapped onto that value in B. In B. So my function is onto if all the elements of B has something in A that's mapped onto it. So those are our things. We've got a function, then we've got a one-to-one -one function and an onto function. And now we can define what the inverse is. My inverse function simply means f inverse of y, and that's notation. Now take note, it's not an exponent. It doesn't mean to the power minus one. It's an unfortunate notation, but it's commonly used. It looks to it like an exponent, but it's not. f inverse of y is equal to x is true when y is equal to f of x. So a one-to-one -one function f with domain a and range b has an inverse function f inverse to with domain b and range a. So those are my functions, f and f inverse. So if I know for my function f of 5 is equal to 20, and I know the function meets the requirements that it's one-to-one -one and onto, then I can say, well, then f inverse of 20 must be equal to 5. So that is how it works. So it's an inverse relationship as we understand it.
So let's look at these two examples. My first one, 4x minus 5, that's a straight line. We're happy that that function is 1 to 1 because it's simply a straight line. So to find my inverse, algebraically, what I, do, I, do I do? I write my function f as y equal to, because I want an x and a y there. Now the original, it was given in the form f of x, but I just rewrite it a little bit. Because then to find my inverse, I simply swap x and y. x and y trades places, so x is equal to 4y minus 5. Then I make y the subject, so x plus 5 is equal to 4y. So y is equal to, we can put the whole thing over 4 or look at a quarter x plus 5 over 4. That is y. So f inverse of x, if I want to write it similarly to as the original function. So if f of x is 4x minus 5, the inverse function is a quarter x plus 5 over 4. Now if, it, if I had to sketch this. My original function is a straight line cutting the y-axis at minus 5 and the x-axis at 5 over 4. My inverse is also a straight line, but it cuts the x-axis at minus 5 and my y-axis at 5 over 4. And that's what the inverse function looks like. So this is the function of f, that's the function of f inverse. And what I want you to notice, and this is going to be the case every time, that my inverse functions graphically are symmetrical around the line y equal to x, because we're swapping x and y. So for this function, the domain isn't very obvious, or the domain is a bit trivial, it's a re all real numbers, the range is all real numbers, but the domain in the range changes. But everything interchanges. My, my y-intercept of f becomes my x-intercept of f inverse. My x-intercept of f becomes my y-intercept of f inverse. They swap domains and ranges, and graphically we can see what happens. Now let's look at the next one. This function, y is equal to the root of x minus 1. Take note that root doesn't have a plus minus in front of it, so we assume it's positive. So if we had to sketch that one, it's simply the positive root, x minus 1. So it's here from 1. That's what it looks like. So it's only positive numbers. So that function is 1 to 1. But I just want to add there that I notice y is greater than or equal to 0. All right. And that's with good reason. You'll see shortly. So if that's my function f, then to find f inverse, x is equal to the root of y minus 1. Now, when y was greater than or equal to, now I can say, well, x is, must then be greater than or equal to 0 because they swap positions. And it'll be clear y shortly. Now we've got x squared is equal to y minus 1, so y is equal to x squared plus 1. So my inverse function is x squared plus 1. Now if I had to sketch x squared plus 1 without any restrictions, I'm going to do that here. x squared plus 1 is the parabola cutting at 1, that's what it looks like. But that function is not 1 to 1. So here's a problem, because if our original function is 1 to 1, the inverse is also going to be 1 to 1. But then we look at this restriction. We saw y was only positive numbers, so x is only positive numbers. So the inverse function has the restriction on its domain that all the x values are greater than or equal to 0. And that is how we sketch the inverse functions. Yet again, symmetrical around the y, line y equal to x. Here the, for f, my x-intercept was 1. For f inverse, my y-intercept is 1. And the domains and ranges swap around. Now, a test to see if you're given two functions, if they are inverses of each other, is we look at the composition of the two functions and we see what we get. Now, I'm using the examples we had in the previous page. If I look at the composition of f with f inverse, F composition F inverse is defined, and you, if you don't know what composition is, look at the, some of the earlier videos on the playlist, and you will see one on the composition of two functions. That is F of F inverse of X. So for this function F, that is substitute, I'm taking F, and I'm substituting into the place of X. What am I substituting? That whole inverse. A quarter X plus 5 over 4 minus 5. And that gives me 4 times a quarter x is x. 4 times 5 over 4 is plus 5 minus 5. That just gives me the function y equal to x.
Well, let's look at the next example, and then we'll make a conclusion. What about F inverse composition F? And you can do the same for this first example. Do it the other way around. But that will be F inverse of F of X. Which means, go to F inverse. Whenever I see an X, I put F of X, the root of X minus 1 squared plus 1. That gives me X minus 1 plus 1, which just gives me X. And that's what we're going to get every time. I'm going to get the identity function X. And we know, we saw from the graphs, these functions are symmetrical around the line Y equal to X. And that's not a coincidence. So if I take the composition of any function with its inverse, I get X. And it doesn't matter which order I take the composition in. So similarly to test if a function if two functions, if one is the inverse of each other, you take the composition and you see that you get the identity function x. We are going to look at more specific inverse functions, namely those of exponential and logarithmic functions and of trigonometric functions later on in this series.